do some throat exercises. La la la. Me 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 me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Code of the Bull presents Weird News. I'm Ben. I'm joined by Mike. Hello. Claire. Hey. Pete. Yo. We're all here. We're going to talk about some random shit we found on the internet this week. It may make you laugh. It may make you sad. It may make you go, what the fuck is that? It may make you cry. But at the same time, it'll be entertaining. And isn't that what you listen to us for? Yeah. I knew so, you'd um, get this one, Ben, so I deliberately mm-hmm. didn't save it when I saw it. Am I that predictable? Yep. <sighs> wow. All right, let's start with the first one. Some alien news, because you know I'm a slut for aliens. NASA allegedly shuts down the sun's live cam after strange black cube emerged. So it's either the Borg or something else. Looks like a black cube to me. In the picture. It does. It certainly does look like a black cube emerging from the sun or feeding from the sun. Maybe it popped in there before mm-hmm. and now it's popped back out. Small little fly on the lens. Cube shaped fly. What, in space? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a space fly. Space fly. Ah, there we go then. <laughs> right, let's start. The live feed of NASA's sun cam allegedly went dark after an ominous black cube sprung from the fiery ball of space gas, leading conspiracy theorists to speculate that aliens were involved. Extraterrestrial experts, Scott C. Waring. I want to be an expert. Can I just start describing myself as an extraterrestrial expert? A what? An extraterrestrial expert. Can I start describing an myself expert. as that? Right. An a- can I start describing myself as an alien expert? <laughs> no. No. Neither can he, really. But Giorgio does. <laughs> Nick Pope does. All oh, right, then. You then, qualify, then. Fantastic. <laughs> discovered the bizarre black cube while looking at footage from the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory when launched in 1995. And according to its website, the project aims to study the sun from its deep core to the outer corona and the solar wind. The footage is readily available to the public, which is where extraterrestrial expert Warren discovered the bizarre black cube. Talking about his supposed cube sighting on his popular blog and YouTube channel UFO Sightings Daily, Warren claimed that NASA shut down the feed once the object revealed itself on May 2nd at around 1.06pm Greenwich Mean Time. I don't know what time it is for everybody else because quite frankly Britain sets the time for everybody else on the planet. (laughs) We tell you when it's tea time, rest of the world. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, Waring says, quote, You can see the cube coming out of the sun, and right after that, a big glitch that covers 25% of that. And there it is, gone. Glitch, he told his followers. Two frames of the cube coming out of the sun, and then a huge glitch. He goes, this is mind-boggling. And this is on the um, Soho office official website. You can see the cube and the timestamp matches. The Soho is the solar a heliospheric observatory thing I mentioned mm. earlier. NASA covers it up. Never a straight answer. Mm. Couldn't it just be a solar flare that, you know, from that angle, it's looking cube-like? I can hear yeah. that. I was wondering that. Because yeah. the substance looks like another little solar flare that's coming out to the... All oh, right, okay, it's quite a bit bigger, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I'll give you that. It's not the first time the black cubes have been seen no. spotted by the sun, and there's some theories that there may be some kind of space creature. They could be alien craft that are absorbing energy from the sun to refuel, um, in a, like a Dyson sphere. Maybe it's just something it kicks out and then it gets sucked back in, you know, some matter of some sort. Or it's an alien craft. <laughs> and that's why they cut the feed. They always cut the feed to get people out of it. Do you think it's all a PR stunt? That's an interesting angle. Yeah. So no one's watching our sun feed. Who can we get them to watch it? Put in a black cube and then cut the feed. That's what you do. Mm-hmm. You can all go, yeah, because now everyone's going to be watching this, aren't they? Yeah. Justify their funding. Fucking hell, Claire. You just ruined the entire UFO industry. <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> Not too bad. No. <laughs> <laughs> the HelioViewer project, a similar platform to so, also went dark around the same time and is also funded by the European Space Agency and NASA. A never a straight answer. While their website showed an error message, 
Warring and his own theories, sorry, conspiracy theories. But let's see, they're already running, saying, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Just because he's like, well, why are they going down? He's asking questions, yeah. they don't want to answer him, so he's like, oh, are you conspiracy theorists? Something weird happens on the feet, and it cuts off immediately after. But that, He's got to raise suspicions, doesn't it? Yeah, but that, if, you ask, if you question I know, that, yeah, oh, you're a conspiracy theory. theorist. Yeah. Mm. That's deflection. Yeah. Yeah. It is strange, I'll give you that. And it's not the first time these things have been seen around the sun. There has been other things. Um, I've seen it myself. Well, not seen it myself. Obviously, I haven't been to space yet. But no, I've seen people reporting it on on UFO sites, watching these feeds. This isn't a new phenomenon. These black cubes hanging around the sun. Maybe there's some weird shit coronal in mass ejection, or maybe these things are hovering around it. Maybe they're watching us. Maybe they're planning. Maybe they're going to invade. It's pretty bloody close. It. You know, should melt, whatever it is. Yeah, unless it's made of materials that we don't understand. If they're that advanced and they're taking fuel directly from a sun, then they're far ahead of anything oh, yeah. we've got right now. So, uh, I for one welcome our black cube travelling new overlords. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's any way I can help you yeah. out. <clears throat> so, looking at the size of that, it's probably about 50, 60, 70, 100 times bigger than the Earth anyway. Yeah. Yeah, you've probably got a valid point there. You can fit a million Earths in the sun. Well, there you go. It's so. bigger than... It's bigger than the Earth, this thing. Yeah, a lot bigger. It's fucking humongous. <laughs> like I say, I for one hope about new Black Cube overlords. We did an episode on the Black Cube, didn't we? Was Saturn that? Cube Matrix. Saturn right? Cube Matrix, yeah. All them cubes around the world, Black Cube. That's right, yeah. What's that one in Mecca? Is it Mecca? It is, mm. yeah. They walk around that big black cube, don't they? I can't remember what it's called now, but yes. Then there's the ones outside various prominent tech companies. on their logos, these big black cubes, government buildings. And the cross, the Christianity, you fold it up, it's a cube. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you can fold any bit of paper. Up no. And, I know what you sound joking. I know it's a, it's a perfect net, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's the cubes. So, so are they are here these already? Are really alien gods? Are they here already? Christianity's got the cube and Islam's got the cube. They all yeah. worship secretly. In Judaism, lives. they have a little black cube on their foreheads ah. containing t- the, the Torah scrolls. Yes. Well, fucking pull my pants down and mm. slap my bottom. <laughs> We've just <laughs> worked out the source yeah. of everything, yeah. really, then, haven't we? Whereas we've been enslaved by <clears throat> black cube travelling aliens or black cube obsessed aliens as long as we can ever remember, but they're so subtle about it. That's their spaceship, big yeah. giant black cube. Hence, every major religion in the world worships the black cube. They don't know about it. Oh, the Christianity one's a bit memer, isn't it? Like, ah, we'll fuck with the Christians. We'll put it in. A, we'll put it into a net. Mm. They won't realise it. A bit more subtle. A bit more subtle, isn't it? Yeah. And a big giant black cube in the middle of a city. Where you walk around. Well, you've, oh, already had, you've already had that, though, haven't you? You've got to use something else. Yeah. Or what if when that black cube spaceship descends and lands perhaps it opens out and looks more like a cross and obviously if you can if imagine as big as a something, planet, though, something if that's a smaller big one. up there mm. and that stretches out everyone's going to see it and then what if smaller craft kind of come from it as it's is, a, massive, a massive cross in the, appears in the sky and all of a sudden every Christian on earth is on their knees praying thinking it's the end times yeah. they could quite easily just sort of Send some dude down dressed in a beard with long hair and a white toga, and you just go, I'm the sixth and second coming! <laughs> Kill everybody! Either way, it's mm. fucked up! Yep. It is. Black cubes, going to a town near you. <laughs> Next up, man who paid $2.9 million for NFT of Jack Dorsey's first tweet. Set to lose almost two point nine million dollars. What the fuck is an NFT? Non fungible transaction. Is that like a cryptocurrency? No, it's like a digital rights. Right. Who's Jack Dorsey? He's a guy who owns Twitter. Right. Did own Twitter. Did own. And he sent a first tweet, obviously. Because he invented the thing. Yeah. And then he paid $2.9 million for the rights to that digital thing. Right. And now he's trying to sell it and it's... No one wants it. No one wants it. Why the f- Why would you want to buy that? 
They think it's worth something. Crypto entrepreneur Sini Estevai made headlines in March 2021 20, when he paid $2.9 million for an NFT of Twitter boss Jack Dorsey's first tweet. But his efforts to resell it over the ground with a top bid of just $6,800 as of Thursday. The initial purchase was at the time among the most expensive sales of a non-fungible token and came amid a flurry of interest in the niche crypto assets. Astavi put the tweet up for resale on the popular NFT marketplace OpenSea last week, initially asking for $48 million. Why is he, why is, who do you think he's going to pay $48 million or something he's paid $2.9 million for? I mean, well, he obviously thinks that it's appreciated in time. <coughs> That price tag was removed after offers in the first week were in the low hundreds of dollars. Mm. As of Thursday, the highest bid was 2.2 of the cryptocurrency Ether, equivalent to about 6,800. I can smell money laundering here. <laughs> can you? <laughs> yeah. Not very well well thought out money laundering. No, nah, it'll, it'll come back to him. You just have to make it look clean. Yeah, you might be right, actually. That's, that's a valid point. It's backfired, isn't it? I'm just confused by the whole thing. Mm. Because I, I don't see how... It's, it, it, it's how a, does a tweet have value? How does a tweet have yeah. value? Mm. Because it's already been on the internet for years. They could just, if they wanted to, they could just gone to his Twitter account, scrolled right back to the start, where it would have taken a while. It would have taken a while? And screenshotted it. For nothing. And he's like, oh no, that's my property now. I'm going to try and... You know, I get it, it's like... We've got this weird thing where there's like internet collectibles. So like something that's been posted on the internet, let's say a really famous meme, someone could pay a lot of money to issue, have the entire rights to that meme and either keep it or sell it on to someone else. And it's like a, a, antiques for it on the internet, but they're not actual things, they're just a digital, a, a digital file. Yep. So it's it's a, it confuses me because uh, for me something like worth that much I want something in my hands. It's David Blaine got to do with it. I don't think that is him, but it, that's lab. That's no, it's that's seen the rest of Abby. Mm. Does not look like David Blaine from here. The a magician. young David Blaine, maybe the magician. It does, doesn't it? A very young David Blaine. Well, he's managed to magic away all his money. Yeah. That's what? mental. I know. So why would you pay two point nine million dollars of real money? Yeah, because he like, earned it by nothing, didn't he? He was a cryptocurrency fucking millionaire, obviously. I think Claire's right. I think there's been money laundering going on. He's acquired two point nine billion. He needs to lose for a bit, and now he has, and it'll come back to him eventually. Just won't be reported on. Mm. Hey, wait, if he doesn't get his money back. Doesn't matter. It's, it's pretty fucking stashed away. Doesn't matter. Gaining interest, he'll probably get more back. He'll make a profit on it. Give it five well, years. About he's paid two point nine million. He's lost that money for that tweet. He's paid someone else for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Claire says there's money laundering going on. Yeah. So he'll come back to now it. Now he's trying to sell it, and it's not worth a fucking anything. He's just lost nearly two point nine million. He'll get it back. I'm telling you, he will. No, that's how money laundering works, Ben. That's just idiocy. No, no, it's, it's, you know, maybe that he's friends with the per- the, you know, the person that owned the tweet. Well, he's not, though, is he? Because Jack Dorsey, the owner of Twitter, the, the old person who... He may have used m- laundered money to buy it, but if he doesn't make his money back, he's lost that money, hasn't he? Mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't think he'll really lose it. Unless it, the, you, well, you know, how would he not really lose it, Ben? I think eventually he'll sell that tweet and he'll get the money back because that's, that's just no, the way these things go. Jack Dorsey's his mate, and he's just going to slip it back to him, like you know. Well, at the moment, the highest bid six thousand eight hundred. In a trickle. So you think this is just a draw publicity for it? Get the price higher. Well, it probably is, but I don't think he's going to get that high, is it? Well, maybe this is a, a like you know a publicity stunt. If we like make this antique and make, you know, it's going to push up the, the prices price, of, yeah. of other things. Other things that you might already own. Which but there's an under the table thing going on here. You know. Yeah, this, I, this is it's a bit. Well, I don't know what you see. I just see an idiot. This is paid I two two point nine million for something that's worth it. I see a bit of almost subtle insider trading. Yeah, I think there's insider <laughs> trading. Mm. It's just like you know. I don't see it. I'm be. with you. I'm with you, Mike. I'm just a bit more suspicious, I Thick guess. Thick fucking turd. But the the internet a- antique thing baffles me. More money than sense. 
That's yeah, it. He, he made right. his money in cryptocurrency. He, had, yeah, he, he made a lot of money from a lot of not much, probably. So people are starting to sleep in medieval box beds again. What? Speaking yeah. of antiques. Okay. So uh, as modern cities become increasingly crowded, innovative interior designers are constantly looking new ways to create space-efficient furniture designs. These efforts are particularly relevant in small apartments in cities such as London, Paris, New York, where space comes to premium. And Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> Mandela Heights in Peckham. Yeah. <laughs> Well-known crowded block of flat size. <laughs> It may come as a surprise, however, the furniture designers have gone all the way back to the medieval past to find inspiration. According to interior designer blog Apartment Therapy, a 600-year-old Breton design has been making a comeback. The so-called box bed is a new trend in efficient, stylish interiors. Okay. Mm, so the box bed, or lit cloth, is known in French is a small raised bed entirely enclosed in wood. It looks like a four-poster. So it's poster. a big, it's a really big coffin. No, <laughs> it looks like a four-poster, but it's got sides Walls. on it and a little, little yeah. doors and, you know, mm-hmm. to get into it that you could shut. Yeah. That's because they used to sleep. Well, well they're not the first. to one room. They ain't exactly the yeah, first yeah. people to do this, are they? Yeah. They're not the first people to do this, really, in a sense, because if you go to Japan, you get those little fucking pods. Those little pod hotels. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, 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 it's not yeah, far. Yeah. It's not far off that, really, is it? No, Let's face no. it. Pod hotels have like you know, radio, TV at the end. These are just wood. Yeah, these are <laughs> wooden. These are wooden beds. I don't really understand. But it, what is it? What is it to like count as a bedroom in itself? Is that what it's for? I guess so. so. You can have one in the corner of a fucking big living room or something, and still have sl- the privacy of a bed. It wants to sleep in that. You would if there's six other people sleep in the same room. Oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. You want some privacy. Yeah. Your own space, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. That's how all that fucking went on. I used to yeah. thought people just watch them parents fuck. No, no, they had these things. Well, a corner, a, a bit of curtain draped across a room or something yeah. like that, but. No. The blanket draped across the corner where the parents slept or something, but that was about it. Alright, well, okay, but also I don't really want to sleep in a box. No. <laughs> I mean, imagine, because you're going to want that privacy on you, so you have a night on the beer, you come back in, you get into your little box, you close the door, and you're just going to fart in there. <laughs> right? He's going to rip them out. You can't open night, the door. Night, night, yeah, but you, you want a bit of privacy, don't you, while you sleep? So you keep the door, and you're a bit drunk, so you close the door, you forget. You just not have a roof, do you? You just don't have a roof. You fucking like, oh my god, go open the door. You open it up, and everyone else is already up in the room, just complaining to your fart smells, just flooding the room. Yeah, but Social they embarrassment. Any- they complain anyway, wouldn't they? Because they sleep in the same room as you, and there's no box bed, so you just fight out in the open, <laughs> stinking the place, and people have complained in before. <laughs> so like, my own, because I have my own room in it, then, if I was just sleeping in the open bed. This is the whole bed. point. So people that can't afford it, and they're sharing rooms with the people well, I don't want to do it I know but prices are so high in these cities they're coming people back are forced in fashion to. yeah fucking hell what a, what a fucking terrible state of affairs <laughs> Brexit Britain go back to Victorian times <laughs> damn you Reese Mug you haunted Victorian pencil he wants us in the workhouse isn't sleeping in them things <laughs> six people to a room uh, yeah so yeah that's shit End of that one. Yeah, I know, but they're necessary. No, I know, yeah, but... It's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? I sort of like the look of them. Yeah, they're all right. Don't say they're all right, this is terrible! I feel like a little It solves a problem, doesn't it? If if I'm sleeping in a room with other people, you get no privacy, one of them, you're fine. Wank away. Yeah, but we should... (laughs) Yeah, you're wanking right now! We're we're not not going out to buy them right right this second. Aren't we? Oh, I'm saying. To in, Ikea! <laughs> in them dire circumstances, they're a good idea. Yeah. But we shouldn't be in those we dire circumstances in the first place. 21st century. Exactly. But... A 21st century problem requires a 14th century solution, Mike. <laughs> doesn't Reese Mogg's in jars, doesn't it? And his cronies. I'm sure, it's 21st century. But... Christ, he's a scary fucker. Matt, what's his name? 
Have Charlie Bronson. Nah, Keith he's Chagwin. <laughs> he's <laughs> dead, he? Yeah, he's actually mm. blessed. Yeah. R.I.P.D. Keith. Who's this? Yeah, Me. Sure. Man who complained about living next door to paedophile, jailed for being a paedophile. <laughs> Darren Higman, 53, complained in 1999 to his local paper about living next to a paedophile and demanded to be moved. It's competition, isn't it? But today <laughs> was convicted... I'm the only pedo in this village! <laughs> <laughs> well, you always find that those who point the finger yeah. loudest and shout loudest and usually got some issues themselves on that particular topic. Look at the amount of anti-gay pastors there are in America that get found sucking a dick in a motel room. Yeah. There's that news about that current conservative congressman, isn't there? About he, he considers himself traditionally sort of conservative <laughs> and recently a video's been leaked online with him naked <laughs> rubbing his crotch over a man's face. What? As you do. Yeah. It's that, like, you know, and he says it was just a, a, a laugh. Just having a, just having a laugh. Just well, having a laugh. Was that what you do? Is it me? <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> so a Brit who moaned about living next door to a paedophile has now been jailed for being a paedophile. He raged to a paper, the local paper that his housing association didn't tell about his new neighbour. Speaking in 1999, he told the paper that he would never have moved into the house had he known about his neighbour's past and even demanded to be relocated. But now the 53-year-old is behind bars himself for being a paedophile. The sick attack has subjected a young girl to a series of vile sex attacks from the age of seven until she was around 11. Oh, God, that took a dark turn. Mm -hmm. oh. I thought, uh, we are talking about paedophile. I know, but I thought he was trying to look at the pictures or something. <sighs> not actually involved in himself in it. Which is still terrible, but yeah. not as bad as this. His abuse ranged from kissing and touching her to forcing her to perform sex acts on him more than once. Higgum of Warrington, Cheshire, appeared before Liverpool Crown Court on Tuesday after pleading guilty to four counts of sexual assault of a child under 13 and inciting a girl under 13 to engage in sexual it's activity. A really fucking heavy one. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I just, it was just amazing that he's complaining about living next to a torpedo. And he was a pedo himself all along? Well, he wouldn't have been at the time, maybe. 20-odd years ago. You don't think the other guy groomed him into being a pedophile, do you? <laughs> hey, have a look at these pictures I've got. Maybe. Oh, you never know. Well, I'm assuming that he may have done this before. We don't know. No. Sick motherfucker. Yep. Maybe it's a way of self-defence for him. He's a pedophile, and he knows he's a pedophile. And, a, and no one pedophile moves in next door. It's isn't it? It's deflection. It means that by pointing out that the guy next door to him is a convicted paedophile... I don't paedophile, want to live next to him. And I don't want to live next to him. It means I can go out and do shit and just blame it on this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh, if, you're, if you're screaming top of your lungs, I don't want to live next door to a pedo, people aren't going to suspect that you're a pedo. Yeah. Very true. And he does look a very scary individual. Yeah. It's like Charles Bronson, doesn't he? He's got a crazy, crazy eye. Mm. He's got crazy eyes and a massive ginger beard. He's rotten in prison now, so fuck him. Yep, I hope he gets beat up repeatedly. Is that a picture of him now, is it, after a few months in prison? <laughs> uh, this is quite a sad one as well, actually. Rogue dog breed is creating Frankenstein puppies worth £40,000 oh. in amateur labs. Oh, that's so tragic. We're looking at a bold looking French bulldog with sort of slightly curled ears at the end. Um, Pitbull ears almost. Yeah, and then like just some some hair up the middle, like a, a mohawk, and it's mate, hairless completely. The rest of him. The rest of him's hairless, and he doesn't look very happy. The new breeds, like hairless and fluffy bulldogs, have been concocted in unregulated fertility clinics. An investigation has found, and experts fear the new breeds will suffer. Yeah. Others being created in the amateur labs are described as hairless French bulldogs. Unscrupulous traders are capitalising on the reluctance of registered vets to do fertility work, but experts for the new breeds will suffer poor health for often short lives. Oh. I was actually doing some really sad research in the night on life expectancies of dogs. Mm. It's sort of debate my house mate, actually, adopting all the dogs. Uh, French, you know, Claire, mm. I know yours are a bit old. How old are yours? Six. Six. Some of the, the newer dogs are being born, Frenchies are so, the nose has been put so short, and pugs and bulldogs. Mm -hmm. You're talking uh, maybe four years of life expectancy. Four years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because they're breathing. Because the breathing issues, they're being bred so much, because there's demand for these dogs at the minute, that mm. they're being bred so much that their noses are getting so they're like, they're suffocating, they can't breathe. That's why they're trying to do ethical breeding, where they're picking the ones with longer noses and trying to sort of breed that yeah. out to, yeah. to stop they're, um, the... They're actually on about stopping breeding those dogs in this country at the moment. Mm. Because it's not fair on the dogs, basically. They've been they've been You're overbred. You're going to get more unethical breeders all over Europe and all well, over the world, aren't you? That's it. The Sunday people found more than sixty dog fertility clinics on social media, located everywhere from Inverness to Kent. Jesus. Yeah. So you can go and have a. Can I have a, an Alice Frenchie, please? And you pay the money. Fucking again. hideous as well. They look nice. Don't they they? they look like fucking gremlins, don't they? They do. Yeah. You got the gremlin, big gremlin ears and. But, they're totally bald and yeah, it apart from the hair on the head the mohawk yeah. which one of the gremlins had in gremlins yeah. too you're gonna get sunburnt and all sorts and yeah. That. yeah that's terrible poor little things yeah some sick bastards about in that just for money I know okay finally a bit of good news to end on end hey. on yeah so man celebrates after his penis attached to his arm gets put in the rightful place I was just explaining this this is a follow on article from a story we had a long time ago where a man had to have his penis attached to his arm because he'd lost it due to infection and it was like we need somewhere to put it that's got a good blood flow and it's, it's warm so he actually had his dick surgically attached to his arm to preserve it and now he's had it put back well, he lost his appendage in 2014 after wow. getting a perineum infection, so the gooch between your butt and your willy. Yeah, the twirl. Oh, I told you it was sepsis, isn't I? And that turned into sepsis. Mm. He says also his like fingers and toes went like purple as well. Shit. And he, he you know, he stood to lose them potentially. So McDonald was devastated on losing his penis, which he said made him feel like a shadow of a man. I can fully believe it. He said, my life really fell apart because I had no self-confidence. Although the, the man already had two children from a previous relationship, he still felt extremely insecure when using the bathroom. How'd you go into? How was it? Sit well, down, wouldn't he? He's got to have a sit down, do you think? Yeah, he's just got a slump <laughs> at this point, hasn't he? Unless he gets a she-wee. Or a she-wee. But then you understand that you're on in the pub using a she no. you? You're not exactly going to brag it about that you've lost your dick, are you? No. Ah, you're going to go in the cubicle. So luckily, Professor David Ralph at London's University College Hospital was able to construct a bionic penis for McDonald using skin from his left arm. However, in order for the skin around the bionic appendage to grow properly, they needed to attach it somewhere where McDonald's oxygen blood supply was high enough and that ended up being on his arm. Wow. So he's just got his dick flopping on his arm. And because of COVID and whatnot, he was only meant to have it on his arm for two years. He ended up, because of COVID, and then one cancelled operation, he, he had it on his arm for four years. Wow. Shit. He says, I can't wear a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to, will it? I can't go swimming with my kids. He calls it Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. His penis dropped off. That's incredible. Poor sod. Yeah, but it's all worked out, right? And he gets, he can still get hard. With a saline solution. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, well, never got, he's never got to worry about impotence, has he? He's 47. Let me pump me cock up. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I still don't think you're going to get the same, you, you know, sort of feeling. It's going to make you feel like a man, if nothing else. Right. Isn't it? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how it would work. I will bang you with my robot cock. Is that your bionic penis? Yeah. In the corner of the six million dollar man down the pub, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter how drunk he is. Six million dollar manhood. <laughs> Six million dollar manhood. Oh. <laughs> they went from dick arm to robo penis. Yeah. Robo cock. Yeah. Robo cock. Oh, and on that note, on that happy note. Yeah. All right. I've been Ben. You can follow us on Facebook at Come to the Bull in the Post Truth Apocalypse, SoundCloud and other podcasting platforms at Come to the Bull in the PTA, and YouTube at Apocalypse Bull. Throw us a like, a subscribe, a review, that'd be great. Look out for them black cubes. They're coming. They're coming. If they're not already here, they're coming. <laughs> All right, Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. And I've been Claire. I'm, I haven't got an outro today. I've been That's Pete. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been Pete. 
don't fart in your bed box and open the door and suffocate all your friends. Yeah. Well, Claire, you a, got a penis for an arm. Don't get a twerned infection. Don't get a perineum infection. There you go. And try and lance you, it yourself. Because you'll have to grow your dick on your arm. Mm-hmm. He started with a boil that he, that he lanced himself. And then you're going to start hugging people. You're, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to hug anyone because your dick's going to slap them up the side. Four years. Get your dick off my shoulder! Exactly. I'm only hugging you. You'd exactly. be arm wrestling champion though, wouldn't you? Yeah, no one would want to arm wrestling, would they? <laughs> yeah. But then again, you can't wear a t-shirt. For four years, you can't wear a t-shirt outside. Oh, shit. I'll just let it flop about, mate. I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, baby. That's right. <laughs> oh, yes. You are seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Come back in a year's time and it'll be attached. And then COVID happens, you're like, come back in another year's time. <laughs> uh, good night. <laughs>